Today I'm going to show you how to fly to Europe for $5 with a quick travel hacking for beginners crash course. If you're looking for how to find the cheapest flights possible, this is it. Now we are talking about travel hacking here, so obviously this does include some airline miles, but hear me out. These airline miles are essentially free. A lot of people know that it's theoretically possible to book cheap airfare using miles, but many don't quite understand how to do it in practice. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through step by step to show you just how simple it is. Let's go. Alrighty, so I wanna pack this video with as much useful information as possible, but I'm not quite sure how to best organize it, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'll start by showing you exactly how I flew from Detroit to Madrid, Spain for just $5 and how the same strategy works for a bunch of different routes from the US to Europe. The thing is, what I did in this instance isn't necessarily what I would recommend for a beginner doing it for the first time. So after that, I'll show you the best ways to get started if you're brand new to travel hacking. Okie dokie, so my $5 flight was from Detroit to Madrid, Spain on American Airlines and I'll show you exactly how I found it here in a second. But to buy it, I needed A Advantage miles plus $5.60. To get my A Advantage miles, I opened the City A Advantage Platinum Select credit card. Again, if I were just starting out, this isn't the card that I would choose, but let's just look at this as an example. At the time of this video, you can get 50,000 bonus miles if you spend $2,500 on the card within the first three months of opening it. So whenever I open a card like this, I just put all of my normal everyday expenses on it for those months. If the card you're using to do this has a higher minimum spend requirement to receive the bonus, you can also plan opening the card around a time when you're going to make a big purchase anyways. There are a bunch of other tricks to meet these minimum requirements as well, but that is beyond the scope of this video. Anywho, by using the card for my normal everyday expenses, I get these super juicy sign-up bonuses without spending any extra money that I wouldn't be spending anyways. So armed with these 50,000 points, let's head over to the American Airlines website. Alrighty, so here we are. First, I'm looking for, in my case, a one-way flight. You can do return if you want. One-way flight, I'm gonna click on redeem miles here. For me, I was going from Detroit, Detroit to Madrid. Number of passengers, one. And I'm just gonna click any day here because it doesn't really matter. And search. Loading, loading, loading. Bam, 30,000 miles plus $5.60. And in this case, it looks like it's any day of the week that you can choose from. Now, this works for return flights as well, but it seems like on the returning leg of the flight, the extra money is a little bit more than $5. I think when I checked with this, it was like $40 total there and back. And so it's still super cheap, but the flights leaving from the US seem like they're the deals that are just $5. Now this should also be the same for any flight leaving the US going to Europe that has American Airlines flights because the cost for the miles here is based on region. Another example here, Las Vegas to Rome, I was just picking out random dates, 30,000 plus $5.60. Here's another one, I was just picking a random example, Omaha just for a random city, to London, same thing, 30,000 points and $5.60. And if you wanna to fly to other places besides Europe, you can check their awards chart, which I'll show you right here, to see exactly how much it would cost. And here are all the different point values, starting in the US, showing, um, here it's showing where you're going to. And you can notice, you can save even more money if you fly the off-peak dates. Off-peak dates are pretty much any date that isn't in high season for the most part. And so you can see here for off-peak Europe, it only costs 22,500 points. And so in that case, the 50,000 sign-up bonus that you got would cover both ways of your trip. These award flights are also main cabin flights, not basic economy flights, and that means that it includes a check bag with the ticket. If you were to purchase a basic economy ticket by yourself, you'd have to pay your own check bag. And if I'm looking here on this site, this will show the different charges. It looks like transatlantic US to Europe, it would cost $75 for your first check bag. 
And so the fact that you're getting a main cabin flight for just $5 out of your pocket is pretty nuts. So basically, once you find the flight that you like, you just log into your American Airlines account, click on whatever flight, and just buy it how you normally buy flights, and it will deduct the points amount and charge your credit card the $5. So as I mentioned, this A Advantage card that we talked about isn't the first card I would start with if I were just starting. There are actually much better options for beginners. Before we get into the beginner recommendations, I wanna let you guys know that I'm putting together a video showing hacks on how to find dirt cheap hotels for after you get your flight. And so make sure to subscribe if you want to get notified when that one drops. Now the goal of this video is to get you up and running as fast and easily as possible so I'm not going to dig super down into the nitty gritties. But if you have extra time on your hands and want to get lost down a huge travel hacking rabbit hole, Reddit is a good place to start. For now though, let's focus on three recommendations for three different types of people to get you started. The first is for beginners who don't have a business. The second is for beginners who do have their own business or any sort of side hustle. And the third is for people who travel every year and want free lounge access. And this is my personal favorite card. Now, unlike the A Advantage card that we talked about earlier, where you only earn miles towards a specific airline or, or their partner airlines. With these other three cards, you earn bank points, and these bank points can be transferred to a bunch of different airlines, and so you have way more flexibility. All right, so the first best option for beginners, at least at this time, is the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. Chase Credit Cards is a great place to start for beginners because they have a bunch of different cards that all earn ultimate rewards points, so you're earning the same points with each card so they accumulate faster. In fact, the Chase Sapphire Preferred card is exactly how I got started. Ultimate rewards can be redeemed in a bunch of different ways, but the best value is usually transferring it out to different airline partners. This might sound confusing and intimidating, but let me show you how simple it is. So my wife is meeting me in Spain, but she's leaving from Colombia instead of Detroit. And so her best option is to fly Iberia. The problem is flights on Iberia from Colombia to Spain costed over $800 just one way. Not cool. Luckily, I stumbled on a loophole and that same $800 flight costed 22,000 points plus $138. I had a crap load of ultimate rewards points that I earned from cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And so I just logged in to my ultimate rewards portal here. It shows how many points I have. I click this down arrow, transfer to travel partners, easy peasy. It's loading. You can see I already have a couple here that I've used, but you just scroll down to whatever airline that you need to use, click on transfer points, type in your name and your ID for that program, continue, and then your points get sent over there. From there, you can use the same method that I used with American Airlines to find the rewards flights. And now with the points in your account, you'll be able to buy it with your points plus a little bit of money. Now offers are constantly changing for these credit cards, but right now the offer for Chase Sapphire Preferred is 80,000 ultimate rewards points when you sign up. That's equivalent to well over $1,000 of flights if you transfer out to different airlines. In other words, basically over $1,000 for free. I've actually gotten the sign up bonus two times for this card, but you have to wait 48 months in between, which is kind of a long time. All right, second up on the list is the Chase Inc. Business Preferred card. If you have a business, this is a great way to earn even more points, either before or after earning the points from the Sapphire Preferred. I use air quotes here because you don't have to have a huge fancy business for this to work. This could be as simple as teaching piano lessons or driving for Uber or any other sort of small side hustle that you have. It currently has a 100,000 point sign up bonus worth over $1,250 in flights. The catch here is that the minimum spending requirement is higher and I'm assuming that's just because they think that businesses spend more than individual people. Regardless, if these spending requirements seem too steep, there are a bunch of loopholes to get around them. Just Google manufactured spending and you'll get a bunch of different ideas. I'm actually using the Inc. Business Preferred card as one of my cards at the moment and so I'll put my referral friend link down in the description below if you want to check what the current offer is. Speaking of referral friend links, when you sign up for a lot of these cards, you can earn even more points by recommending them to your friends. All right, I say my favorite card for last, and that is the Capital One Venture X card. The sign-up bonus is currently 75,000 points, and those points can be transferred to all three major airline alliances. 
This gives you tons of flexibility on which airlines you can choose. It also comes with a buttload of other perks like free access to over 1,300 airport lounges worldwide, 10,000 extra bonus points each year, a free $300 travel credit each year, and a bunch of other cool stuff. It's a premium card, so it has a high annual fee compared to normal cards, but if you travel often and use all the perks that it offers, all those annual credits and bonuses that you get pay for the fee itself. Since these perks essentially pay for the annual fee, I just consider it a free way to get airport lounges while I'm traveling. Because of this, it's actually the only card that I won't either downgrade or cancel at the end of the year like I do with most cards. I'll put my referral friend link below for this one as well in case you're interested in learning more. Now, it's important to note that each of these cards has certain credit score requirements, and so if you don't quite yet meet those requirements, you can always start off with other cards that have lower requirements and then gradually work your way up to these ones. If you want to learn tons of other hacks for finding cheap flights both with credit cards or without credit cards, check this playlist next. It's jam-packed with tricks that I've used to travel the world full-time on the cheap for the past seven years straight. Hope you guys found this helpful. I'll see you in the next one.